Hi everybody, we are back in Connie's Kitchen, episode 30. Wow. That's why you're here, because yes. this is our anniversary episode. You did number 10, number 20. Speaking of number 20, we just won an award Yay. from the, I'm not sure if it's Philo or Philo, I'll find <laughs> out, Media Creative Media Arts Award for Excellence in Programming and such. I don't have the lingo, but this is, the, this is what Chris had made for me for Christmas. It says, Treetop Lodge established November 2013. Soon we'll have a plaque that says that we wow. won an award. Yes. So thank you for being there for that one. Oh, you're welcome. And for being here for this one. And thank you to OCTV and to Nancy and to everybody who's been on the show and to, of course, my wizard, who you guys never get to see him, but he's here. Can, Kyle, can you take a bow? Do you see it? See how it's bowing? There you go. See, that's thank so you, cool. Kyle. One of these days we'll get him on this side, but not today. So, all right, let's get right to it. Yes. You are going to cook a lobster. Yes. Yes. I love lobster. So I'm going to turn on the water. But before that happens, I wanted to try to make kind of a fun, different take on coleslaw. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna have you do some grating. And here's just a basic head of cabbage, green cabbage. I'm gonna take some of these outer leaves off. Now is that cabbage I can buy in any store? It's cabbage you can buy in any store. Mm. Well, probably not like the gas station. Oh, okay. You know. Yeah, that's, you don't wanna get sushi there basic, either. Yeah, your basic grocery stores. Okay. So just take, I don't need this here right now, and nope. you know, cut it, we've well, done this before. Oh, yeah. Give it a good whack. And then start that. And then we'll throw a little bit of <laughs> red onion with it to give it some color. Because, you know, I have to have red onion and everything. Oh, look at that. Now we've split it in half. Get this out of the way. There's the garbage bowl. Thank you. Need my garbage bowl. Yes, sir. Now, while he's doing that, I'm going to make up, instead of just the basic dressing for coleslaw, I am going to start with mayo. So we do need a bit of sweet. Oh, don't you love it when bottles make that noise? Be like, excuse, excuse me. Excuse you, yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for uh, that. For once it wasn't me. <laughs> so I'm just going to start with some regular mayo. And then for some fun, I reached into the pantry here, and I have some honey mustard Dijon. Mmm. I thought that'd be just a different take, you know? That would be a different take. You think it would be a different take? I think it would be a different Are take. Are a smart aleck? No, not at all. No, not at all. All right, so just add a little bit of that. We're just making up a small quantity for now. I'm going to mix it. Ooh, that smells good. Mmm, that does smell good. Yeah. Now I want to thin it down because we want it to really coat the cabbage. So I'm going to add a little, just a little bit of half and half. A little half and half? That's insane. <laughs> it's not coffee. Now what does that do, adding that? Just thins it out a little bit. Adds a little bit of richness. You could mm. use milk, but I happen to have this handy. But I take it not coffee creamer. Like the flavored stuff. No, no, no. Not like no. hazelnut coleslaw. Well, you, you know what? That. I always say do what you want to do, and if that's what you want to do, do it. I'm not going to do it. Don't do that. Don't do it. <laughs> so this will huh. just be something a little bit different and zestier to go with the lobster. Chris is going to take you through the whole lobster process. Yeah. I'm going to leave the room and go outside to the grill and grill some corn. Because as much as I love lobster, I'm not crazy about the process. All right. So we've got a little bit of mayo, a little bit of honey mustard Dijon, some salt and pepper, and hmm, I don't think so. I was going to put rosemary in, but I thought twice about it. Hey, you can stop. I can stop now? Yeah. All right. Now just grate me a little bit of red onion into there. Whew. Okay. I'm sorry. I probably starting should have said get, stop. Starting to get sooner. grater's elbow. <laughs> oh, you want me to peel it for you? Could you please? Yeah, forgot to Thank do that. Thank you. I'm sorry. So, getting this award is really thrilling. And I'm so especially thrilled for OCTV because they have done so much and come such a long way. I've lived in Oxford for 25 years. And I started watching OCTV mm -hmm. several years ago. I periodically would try, but it just didn't do anything for me. And even before I got, got the show here, I started watching... And about three years ago, things just completely changed, which is what made me want to do the show. So much original programming, every meeting, every sporting event. It's wonderful. Just wonderful. And I love being a part of it. It's starting to fall apart on me. That's all right. We don't Onion. need much. I know. I just want to. 
Yeah, it's hard to, to grate an onion. It is hard to grate an onion. Yes, it is. That's a tip for the kids out there. It's <laughs> hard to grate an onion. All right, there. There you go. That's fine. Here, let me just set this right in the sink. Okay. You got and some then, extra on it. Mm. And the fun thing, the good thing about coleslaw is if you make it up first and stick it in the fridge while you're doing everything else, it kind of sits there and the moisture comes out of the cabbage and it just becomes just a very nice light <coughs> bite. And I think this will be really nice with the lobster and the corn. Don't you think? I think I'll be right. I also think I shouldn't have taken that big hunk of red onion. Is that what you did? And just ate it. <coughs> <coughs> I've done that. I was a little strong. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. Yep. <coughs> So there you have a real simple basic coleslaw. You can add other things to it. You could add nuts. You could add sesame seeds. You could add poppy seeds. Poppy seeds would be good. Yeah. I wouldn't add nuts. That's nuts. <laughs> well, you know what I wanted to do though is a little different twist on something you make all the time. Mm -hmm. So rather than pre-cut cabbage and a jar of Marzetti's, we've just made coleslaw. Real no simple. To Marzetti's. It is no, good, Marzetti's is great. So send us a bunch you if you're how, watching. <laughs> you saw how easy that was to do. So I'll just set this over here for right now. And pretty soon the water the water's coming up. Yeah. And Chris is gonna dump, he's gonna go through the whole process with dumping the lobster in the water. Mm -hmm. He's gonna make some clarified butter. Um, I'm gonna do some melted <clears throat> dill butter. We had the dinner up here last night with the posse. The Lone Ranger posse. The Lone Ranger posse. I had some leftover dill butter, so I've decided I'm going to melt that and paint it on the corn when it comes off the grill. That's crazy. Dill yeah. butter? Why not? Wow. But I'm going to put the, the corn's been soaking in salt water. I'm going to throw it on in the husk, and it, what it, that water does is it kind of steams it. Mm -hmm. So when I pull it off and peel, it'll be nice and hot, and I'll paint it with the butter. Mm -hmm. and since I'm not chewing today, I'll let you taste the corn. <laughs> so. Head on back here shortly, and I'll let you kind of take over while I disappear. Okie dokie. Does that work? That works. All right. got the corn I just threw it on the grill terribly exciting so you don't need to stand there and watch me watch corn no. and I'm gonna turn it over to you to <laughs> cook a lobster <laughs> explain what you're doing and why because this is my least favorite part of the process but I will be back in time to eat some lobster okay then. so you enjoy I will I'm gonna disappear for a few minutes all right then I'm gonna come back and bother you okay well now it is time for my favorite thing cooking a live lobster live lobster is the best food there is it is so delicious so sweet so juicy there is nothing better and actually which is ironic because it comes from probably one of the ugliest creatures there is i mean look at this this is a face only a mother could love and if the mother knows how good lobster tastes eh, not so good for him i actually think we're doing lobster a favor by eating them because who wants to go through life this ugly i mean really look at this thing <laughs> a couple of uh, myths i wanted to dispel about lobsters before we cook this guy here is one lobsters do not scream when you put them in the pot Lobsters don't have vocal cords, they don't have throats, they don't have lungs. So that sound that some people think is screaming when you put them in boiling water is actually the air that's trapped in the shell as, it, as the lobster heats up, it expands and it escapes gaps in the shell and produces a sound sometimes. That's what people hear and they think is screaming, but the lobster is not screaming. Also, lobsters do not have a true brain like we have with a cerebral cortex and all that good stuff. They have very simple goings on in there. I won't get into all the biology of it, but basically they don't feel pain. You're throwing them in, boom, they're dead. That's it. So anybody who feels bad about what's happening in the lobster, you don't. It's food. It was put on this earth for us to eat, so there's no reason to feel bad about it. And besides, it's very, very delicious. Look at how delicious you are. Oh, you're so good. All right. First, what we're going to do is when you get them live, they always have these rubber bands on the claws to make sure you don't hurt yourself. So we're going to cut these off and grab the handy dandy scissors here 
And you want to be very careful when you do this because you don't want to get pinched by these claws. So there's one. And let's do the other one. All right. Now this guy is ready to go in this pot of boiling water here. So what we're going to do is, any last words? No? Quiet? Okay. We're going to put him in. Oh, there he goes. Actually, probably should have used a little bigger pot. Usually I do, but since I'm only cooking one today. So he is now in the water, and we want to set our timer for 10 minutes. He's about a 1.1 pound lobster, so about 8 to 10 minutes. I'm doing 10 just to be safe. That's usually what I cook my lobsters at. Um, very good, very tender, very juicy. And while that's going, I'm going to get the, uh, get the butter going here. If I can figure out how to turn on. Honey, you want to help me turn oh, on this stuff? Yes. Yeah, well, that's you... the bun warmer. Oh, so that's the bun warmer. Okay. I want to turn this on because we're going to make some clarified butter to go with the lobster. There, there you go. we go. Okay. It's second knob there. All right. So basically, just take a bunch of good, good, whoa, gooey lobster. Yep. We don't want it to fall off. Tends to tip, tibble. Take some butter here. I think I said gooey lobster. I meant butter. And you basically want to cook the butter until it gets nice and clear and uh, you get the fat floating on top and then you skim that fat off and then you use what they call it what results is clarified butter and that's what we're going to dip our lobster in and it's so so good yes it oh. is yeah you know, i got right. a little got a warmer for you <clears throat> oh thank you i might not have remembered to bring any tools but i remembered to bring the warmer want to get another close-up on that bad boy in the water oh, i'm gonna go out and check that. my corn isn't that nice look at that so delicious Turning bright red. You notice he was darker in the beginning, and as they cook, they get to be a lighter red. So he's in there, taking a nice warm bath. I'm going to take him out. He's going to be so delicious. Lobster is so sweet, and you know you can get it in restaurants, and restaurants is good, but frankly, lobster in restaurants is overpriced, and a lot of times it's overcooked and rubbery. Doing it at home, you can cook the lobster exactly how you want it, not how the restaurant prepares it and overprices it for you. So, and I love to go, I just pick up live lobster here at uh, the Oxford Meyer. You can go right to the tank and you can pick it. And what's great is you kind of feel like a Roman emperor when you go up to the lobster tank, you know. It's the only time you're going to feel like uh, Augustus Caesar sitting in the Coliseum watching the games before him and you're like, bring me the brown one. He amuses me. Drop him in the pot. That's an old joke from an old movie, so if you found it funny, it was not, not, eh, whatever. So he is cooking away, boiling away, and once he's done, we're going to take him out of the pot, and we're going to take him out of the shell, and I'm going to show you what the meat looks like, and I'm going to show you another part of the lobster in the next segment that people don't often eat around here, but which is very good, called the tamale. Uh, let's see how that butter's coming along, meanwhile. Oh yeah, the butter's melty. You can't go wrong with butter. Everything tastes better with butter. Mmm. Oh, uh, where would we be without butter? No, none of that margarine crap or that can't believe it's not butter. You want real good butter, straight from the cow. And that's unsalted butter because it's richer. Personally, I like salted butter, but whatever. <laughs> I like salt on everything. So. Well, the corn's cooking, and while he's doing that, this is some of the leftover <clears throat> dill butter that I had from last night. Mm -hmm. We never waste here at Connie's mm -hmm. Kitchen. So I thought, instead of just straight butter, there's a lot of butter in this meal. A lot of butter, and that's what makes it good. I was standing out at the grill <clears throat> and I thought, if I start talking now, I wonder if they'll be able to hear me. So I'm just going to pop this in the microwave. Oh yeah, we were going to go out to the grill, weren't we? Yeah. <laughs> well, there's not much going on at the grill. But I tell you, there's a lot going on here. A lot going on here. I have just posted a whole <clears throat> bunch of dates for wine dinners, beer dinners, scrapbooking. Uh, December, we're not doing any lodge events. We're leaving that open for, for people for their holidays. So a lot of people are calling about Christmas parties and family gatherings. And then we are partnering with Parks and Rec. Mm. And starting with the January to March season, excuse me, <clears throat> don't want that to explode. Um, we're going to be posting a whole bunch of treetop lodge events in the Parks and Rec brochure. Wow. Great. And that'll be, actually, they'll mail that out on December 9th. So Ooh. when you get that, start looking through it. And uh, Ooh, watch check the butter. the butter. So that'll be really cool. And another way for you to find us, you know, really. Oh, look at that butter. And lobster boiling away there. Mmm, so now, delicious. Now, he's clarifying the butter. Um, 
sometimes, and we've done this also, where we took butter and actually instead of clarifying it, browned it. And you get this really nutty flavor to it. Just as a little difference, you know, with the lobster. When we first met, he wouldn't touch lobster. No, I would not. I sweet talked him into tasting some, and we well, see what's happened. Now we cook it. I love at home. lobster. There's yeah. nothing better. Well, it's pure and it's clean and it's simple. It's nature's most perfect food. Is it? It really is. Okay, I thought that really. was scotch. No, no. Scotch is angel's milk. That's true. That's true. All right, well, he's going to finish up the butter here and separate it. I'm going to go check the corn, and when we come back, he's going to take you through the process, albeit with weird tools, of how to break the lobster down so that it can be eaten. So we'll see you back here in just a few. Welcome to American Legion in Oxford for the best fish on Fridays. That's right, from noon to 8.30, you can get the best walleye in Michigan. You can get walleye, baked cod, chicken strips, baked potatoes, and more. On the hall side of the Legion, oh, hello there, friends. You can have 12 friends on a table, any one of the best military museums in Michigan. On the dining side, oh, hello again. More comfortable with many four-seat tables and a couple of five-seaters. Now, on Friday, we have usually have about four to 500 best friends for our fish. Carry out. You bet. We have 50 to 60 carryouts at the post. We have some young fans with the birthdays and some of our best seniors at the post. Oh yeah, waitresses, they go like a track waitress to get your food. If you have never enjoyed our secret famous walleye at the Legion, come on in. Every Friday from noon to 8.30 at the American Legion Post, 108 on 130 East Rainer Road, Oxford. We are back. We're back. We are ready to very slowly We're pour the butter. Pour the butter out and through a strainer. And that way any of the milk fats that are have separated, they'll be caught in the strainer. Let's get that. And that just fine stop there because it's full. There we go. Alright, now set this in there and set that in the sink. Yes, ma'am. Alright, and I'm gonna set this over here and hope he doesn't shake the table too much. Maybe I should set it back here while you're doing the lobster, huh? No, maybe. All right. All right. We're ready to take the lobster off. All right. While he does that, I'm going to go out and grab the corn. Did I leave you a uh, tongs? I did. You don't need this. I'm going to take my little lobster friend here. This is Rhett. Oh, yes. Let's turn off the flame. You know what, Rhett? He shouldn't be subjected to this. No, I think I'm going to move them just so they don't get lobster gook on them. Oh, out. look at that. You come back here and sit with... Take them out of the pot with tongs. Very important so you don't burn your hand. So let's move over to the sink here. And one thing I like to do, because he is hot. That shell is piping hot. So we're just going to... I like to put a little cold water on them just to... Not, not make them cold, but just cool down that shell a little bit. Because that shell retains heat. All right. Feel in a little more. All right, he's ready to touch. All right, now I can pick him up. So there he is. Let's go over the table here. Now, I don't have all my tools with me today. Usually I have lobster crackers and I use a meat mallet. So, you know, since the guy is doing the kitchen today, we're just gonna use a good old fashioned eight ounce claw hammer. <laughs> now you can use a ball peen, dealer's choice. First, we're gonna take off the tail and just break it off just like that. Oh, look at that. And let me go back over to the sink here. Let's get a little more cold water. And if you want to count, what we're going to do here is we're going to take off these little pieces off the tail here so we can get at the tail meat. And once I've taken these pieces off, the tail's exposed, and I can just take my thumb and push through oh, and pull it out. And whoo, it is hot. This is the part that I lost a lot of skin cells over. All right, run them under a little cold water. I'm going to take this back piece and kind of clean them out there. Make sure we got everything. And oh, look at that. Look at that beautiful lobster tail meat. That is great. That is wonderful. We grab a plate here and we'll put that on. And the next thing we want to do is take the claws off. So you can just take the whole arm off like that, break off the, the arm joints there. And now we got the claws. So we'll go back over here and Cool them down a little because they're still very hot. And I don't have fingerprints now after this segment. 
And now to do this, you want to gently just kind of, the claws, usually you can use a cracker or I've used a meat ballot and today I'm using the claw hammer. Just kind of a little tap like that and see we've already made a mess. I'll hear about that later. Oh, yes, hi, you how you doing? <laughs> Didn't yes, realize you, you were there. Okay, making lobster, it's not going to be clean. You're going to make a mess. It's just what it is, but it's so good. Life's too short to be clean. So there we go. There we go. Now we get that meat out. Oh, sometimes oh, it, it smells good. Sometimes it's easier said than done, folks. Oh, not coming out as clean as I'd like today. There we go. All right, and there's this little piece of cartilage inside the claw. You want to take that out. So now we've got our claw meat. Oh, look how good that looks. We'll do the same thing to the other side one. Here. I'm peeling the corn of the cob, <clears throat> wearing my elf gloves. I have. I'm going to get you a lobster cleaning tent, something that will be set up just for when you're working on lobster. Uh, you know, guys, when we cook in the kitchen, we, uh, we make a mess, we do, and don't our wives always complain about it? Well, that's because we usually get to clean up that wonderful mess that you made. Look at that corn. Look, look, look. Mmm. <sighs> All right, now we've got the other one out. The other one does not have, the other claw does not have the piece of cartilage, so you're good. And now here's a little part. That some of you are going to find disgusting, but it's actually very good. The spoons are behind you. Let me grab some bread over here. Oh, well, wait a minute. Let's. Okay. There you go. There is, inside the lobster, there is a delicacy. Most people throw this away. All this good green stuff here. I get a called, close up on that? It's called tamale. T O M A L L E Y. This is actually the liver and pancreas of the lobster. Now, I know that might sound disgusting. But it's actually very delicious, and in New England, it's considered a delicacy. Now, there's a warning sometimes about eating the tamale. Because it is the liver and pancreas, those are the organs that filter all the pollutants and environmental stuff in the ocean, all the bad stuff. And so some people say that it's not good to eat it because you could get sick from eating it sometimes. But I've eaten it and never gotten sick before. So anyway, so you can eat this. It's very good. It's very delicious. It has a sweet flavor. What I like to do is take it and just spread it on bread like this. So it looks very good, very delicious, very tempting. Or sometimes it's fun just to take the spoon and dig in the lobster shell itself and look at this. Mmm. Mmm. That's like nature's pudding cup right there. That is so good. Oh my God. Mmm. There's nothing more manly than eating food right out of the head, you know. That'll... That sends, a, that sends a message to everybody else. Okay, I'm just over here buttering the, uh, the corn with the dill butter. Mm-hmm, that looks not, good. Not watching what he's doing. I'm going to watch her while she's doing that, and it's nice. I can just eat straight out of my lobster while I'm watching her. Mmm. Oh, so good. But, you know, spreading it on the bread. Mm. Oh, yeah. I had hopes of putting together a nice plate, but he's going all He-Man on me here, so I'm just going to put some coleslaw on here so you can taste it. Uh-huh. Mm. Okay, stop with the tamale now. Okay. It's only a half hour it is show so done. Good. <laughs> okay, taste some coleslaw, taste some corn. In the meantime, I'll give you my spiel while he's doing it. Do you want me to put the lobster on that plate? It doesn't matter. I want you to taste the coleslaw. Oh, okay. Stop interrupting me. Sorry. Lobster makes him crazy. You remember? Mmm. Call me, Connie, 248-933-4579. You can hit me up on Facebook, Treetop Lodge Oxford, which is going through the roof. Watch us on OCTV and YouTube, Connie's Kitchen. Our numbers are amazing. You can email me at stormy39588 at att.net. And our website, Treetop Lodge Oxford. Now, the updated events are all on the Facebook page because things happen so fast, it's a lot easier than trying to update the website every day. But check it out because there's a lot of photographs and such. You can see what the place looks like. And there we have it. We have lobster. Well, we haven't eaten any of the well, lobster I, oh, yet. I want some. Let's do that. I don't have a fork. I don't need a fork. Just you rip don't me need off a, a fork. piece. There I you go. Take that. Ah, Look at this. A little bit of the clarified butter. Mm. Oh, that is so sweet. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Oh, yeah. Thank you, sweetheart. That now, at good. home, my husband takes these mm. and hangs them on the wisteria around our porch. And I'm not sure why. I said it's a warning to others. I'm not sure a warning of what, but... <laughs> yeah, Did don't... you try some corn? Here, try mm -hmm. some corn. I was busy eating more lobster. That's head. fine. That's fine. Mm. Is this lunch or what? Mmm. Is it good? Good. Keep it over the table, babe. <laughs> good. So there you go. We cooked a lobster. We made coleslaw. We made corn on the cob. 
in less than a half hour, because you saw the lobster, it's a small mm. one, it only took about 10, 10 minutes. 10 minutes, that was a one pound lobster, about 10 minutes. Yeah. So, I mean, you could even do this for lunch. You could. Quick, easy, delicious, best and there fun. Is. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for coming again. Oh, you're welcome. You're the best husband ever. I know. And we are heading off to our, um, Indiana in October to receive our award. Kyle will be going and Chris will be going. And it'll be very exciting. When I get it, we'll put it on the show so you can see it. So in the meantime, enjoy. I will. And be nice to one another because people wonder what you're up to when you're smiling at them all the time. But don't be too nice to the lobsters because they're delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for visiting Connie's Kitchen. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. You're watching OCTV, Oxford Community Television, serving Oxford, Addison Township, and the village of Leonard.